Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, That Guy Chris, where tonight we are playing some of God's Basement. We're back at this game again, and I completely forgot how to play this shit, because it's been a while. But I did uh, hear from you guys that you wanted me to finish this game outside of Spookfest, so I did not forget. I know I have several different types of requests. I gotta get through all of them, I promise I'll get to play those games. James, it's been a while since our last encounter. Yes, it has. That was a lot of information to absorb. Yeah, no kidding. I hope you got most of it, but I'll try to summarize the best. Oh, good, a refresher. This is perfect for everyone watching right now. You were trying your hardest to get by high school while also taking care of your grandmother, along with holding a part time job. Yeah, he's a good kid. At the end of high school, you had amazing grades and received a full ride scholarship. The only problem was you would have to leave your grandmother to attend college. She raised you all by herself after your parents passed away. It tore you up inside, knowing that you would have to abandon her to move forward in your life. Slowly but surely, her condition kept deteriorating, to the point where it was an extreme burden to provide care for her. You had to make a choice, abandon her and move on with your life, or throw away a full ride scholarship and sacrifice your potential to take care of her. Are you ready to find out what choice you made? This is kind of exciting, isn't it? Well, I won't make you wait any longer. You chose to stay. You felt that it would be wrong to abandon her, especially when she needed you the most. She took care of you when you were abandoned, right? You were just returning the favor. If you haven't noticed, this area represents your old job. The one you worked while taking care of your grandmother uh, okay. after you graduated. This is my little purgatory. First thing you should probably do is sign in. Enter the door to your left and find your ID card. I'll speak to you soon. Well, I can't Good say luck. he did the wrong thing, because that's probably the thing I would have done too. He did what he thought was right. Now, he doesn't know that his grandma, well, I can't remember if his grandma was one that, uh, was involved in the act, because his parents died in a, in a fire, right? I know his grandparents died in the act, and the grandparents didn't let him, see, let the grandmother see the grandkid, then the grandparents mysteriously both die in a fire that I think may or may not be connected to said grandmother, so. First thing I do is sign in. I got, I got pretty car. Number of organized boxes. Jesus Christ. Okay. This is what he did? I can see why he would want to fucking kill himself. Oh my god. Oh no. One box at a time? Really? I don't even know where they go. Oh, no. Don't make me do 50 boxes this way. Fuck me, man. <laughs> yes, we're gonna be here for a while, folks. Oh, holy shit. I hope some spooky shit happens or something. Oh, it's just telling me through the wall. Okay. Wow, this is fucking ridiculous. This is all you did. I mean, this is something that people do, actually, like, right now in real life, so... I did a job similar to this for a while, and let me tell you. Are you having fun organizing those boxes? No! No one would. This is fucking... This is brutal. I can't carry more than one box at a time. I better not do actually all 50 boxes before some spooky shit happens. I I don't oh man. Are those boxes heavy? It must get pretty tiring doing this eight hours a day, five days a week. Stop mocking me. Please stop mocking me. He did this all for the sake of his grandmother. He could be fucking writing up code in fucking LA getting some serious puss right now, but nope. Decided to stay back and do this. Eight hours a day, five days a fucking week. 
because he loves his grandma so damn much. I don't know about so much as love. It's like more like loyalty. So it feels like, can I get this box? Let me get that box. But that's fine. There's plenty of other boxes to grab. At least it's kind of obvious on where they go. So that's nice. Oh, man. So, yeah, I did a job kind of similar to this at a Raymond James Stadium down by me. Uh, it was a mail sorting room, and we would do stuff like this. I was the guy that, that pushed these boxes filled with uh, mail to sorting rooms, and someone else would basically sort out all this stuff. And I rotated. I did the position. I did the mail sorting, and I also did the... Uh, uh, hey, I think you missed one. Look over there in the corner. This one. I'm not even close to being done yet, but okay. Also, fuck you, man, for mocking me like this. There's no spooky shit happening in the background. But yeah, I did that for hours, for months. Uh, it was a part-time job, so I'm gonna keep me going for a while. And it was, it was boring. It was fucking... It really broke you down. I think you're just mocking me. Okay, well that's... That's fine. You're a dick. I did that for about six months, and I did, uh, I worked at an ice cream factory, too. I think I mentioned the ice cream factory once or twice before. And, um, I liked the ice cream factory better, because it was more laid back. I got paid more, and, um, the people there were just chiller, too. I mean, when you find a place that you work at, can I put this box down so I can fucking move on with my story? Why can't I drop this box? I don't know, why can't I crouch? I should be able to crouch, right? It should be a control or something. Can I drop this box? I know, like, where it should go. Let's see here. There has to be a... I might have just forgot the controls for crouching. Um... Forward, left, interact, flashlight, zoom, pause. No, I don't see anything here for crouching. That's really weird, actually. Then how do I put this box down? Oh, that's a flashlight. God, that, that scared the shit out of me. Ow. I just stuck. Oh, what the f Where did it go? Where did this box go? Was I trying to put it in the wrong spot? Maybe that's what I was doing. Okay, maybe I just fucking zoned out and put it, tried putting it in the wrong area, I guess. But it should be on the ones on the right, so it should be here. Yeah, there it goes. I should have went there. Fuck with me. At least we're almost halfway done. This is. If really nothing happens, I'll skip all this. So you guys won't have to see this. I'll do my like, little bogging talk every now and then because I think you guys are kind of interested in what's going on here. At least the three people that are watching this are, so I won't skip that stuff, but I don't want to waste your guys' time. Does it get tiring? Yes, it does. Doing this job day after day, only to come home having to care for your elderly right. grandmother. Right, right, that's the worst part. This isn't even, like, work for him. This is just stuff he does so he has fucking money. His real work starts when he gets home. That's the fucked up part. But he loves his grandma. He loves his grandma. It's gonna fucking get me though. I can feel it. It's it's leading me to a false sense of security. So I let my guard down. Sometimes that works on facing the wrong way. Where does that box go? Huh? Yeah. But yeah, it's letting my guard down so I can get hit with the jump scare. It's gonna fucking be terrifying, and I'm not gonna scream because I don't scream. I mean, sometimes I scream, but I like to think I don't scream often. I guess. Go. Do you ever feel regret? Maybe you should have just taken the scholarship and ran off. Dude, shut up. That would have been such a dick thing to do, but. Also, at the same time, putting her in hospice might have been the fucking... Like, that's a responsible thing to do, too. She, at least she's being taken care of. Where does that box go? There's only so much you can do for your loved ones, and you like to think that if they really did love you, they would want the best for you, and the best for them for you sometimes is not always taking care of them like that. So, it's really... It's, it's a toss-up, man. I like to think my loved ones would want what's best for me. The best for me is not always what's best for them and that's what tough love is so at least you would think so i know there are some people out there that are not like that that expect you to take care of them because you uh you know 
you raised them or we did whatever else and you know of all the potential you wasted was it worth it it goes both Doing ways the same all I'm say every single day I swear to God, there's like some kind of way I could like, you know, solve this puzzle without actually doing all the boxes. I would be fucking pissed out of my mind if it was like, oh yeah, you don't actually have to do all the boxes. You can just, you know, choose to walk away and that's like signifying that you chose to want to leave or something like that. But I was told I stayed and this is what I'm doing, but am I trying to break the cycle right now? Like, what's going on? Really gonna have me put 50 fucking boxes away one at a time? I mean, that's what it feels it like. It might seem like I'm trying to belittle you. You definitely are. Thought you had at the time. I, I don't doubt that, unfortunately. Unfortunately. This is definitely a horror game. This is fucking a uh, midlife crisis simulator working a dead end fucking job 9 to 5 with no chances of fucking advancement. This is, this is really a fucking horror game for the average American dream right here. This is the best you'll ever be. God damn, that's terrifying. Uh, four more boxes left. Three more boxes left. I didn't fill up this room. Oh, if it has another room, more boxes, I'm gonna lose my shit. Wow. Job, Expert employee. Are you ready to start all over again tomorrow? Mm. Thank you. I I can't wait. I'm gonna go home, I guess. Nope, not going there. Do I have to clock out? I don't leave through the big old exit sign, huh? I don't like how big my fucking footsteps are. I wonder if I could have just left whenever I wanted to, if I had to actually fucking finish that whole entire bit completely. That's kind of interesting to me a little bit. I'm curious if that was an option or if that was a choice or not, you know? Like, I could have just left whenever I wanted to. I chose to finish the do the boxing thing because I was, as I was told, kind of like a psychological thing. I, I don't know. I could run back and try experimenting with that again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep moving forward, and I'm going to be glad that I'm moving forward, and I'm going to just... Be happy with that. Oh, I'm home now. I take care of freaky ass grandma. That never likes to leave lights on in the house. Never mind. Lights in the house, right? Grandma, I'm home. Welcome home. Thank you. Thanks, me. On our big ass 10 inch TV. I was well watch TV on my fucking smartphone at that rate. Jesus Christ. All right. I don't like how tight this house is. Or I don't like the weird crunching sounds, too. Got our favorite cereal here. I ain't going down there yet, unless I have to. Let's explore the rest of the house before we go down the creepy-ass basement. Let's do that. How about that? That sounds like a good one. We don't know what else is going on. Come home, take a shower. That's the fuck is with her? so many creepy ass damn basements in this house, man. The fuck out of here. It's probably my room, maybe? Grandma's room? Sorrow. Yeah, I'm experiencing something like that. Can't tell if that's an owl or the howls of the undying. Needs hammer. I need a hammer to break into Gamma's room. Let's go to the other place that kind of had light. I ain't going in there. Why do I need a fucking hammer to go into Gamma's room? Why don't I just leave Gamma alone? Or just sleep? Maybe she'll take the laundry room. Hello. 
So I was thinking since I'm getting back into playing, oh, the fucking boxes I work, I use at work. That's almost fucking sickening how daunting that is. Um, since Resident Evil 8 is coming out, and I'm really excited for that. I think that's going to be a really great game. I'm going to fucking enjoy the shit out of it. How do you guys feel about me doing a Resident Evil 7 Let's Play? I already beat that game. Um, I think I streamed it back when I was trying to do all my shit. I actually could still stream it, but I think I'll do like a Let's Play of it and do a couple of episodic episodes of it and, uh, just get everyone hyped up, including me, building barricade. I'm keeping your- oh, no. That is not what I thought was going to happen. That is not what I thought I was going to do. That's why. I thought I was going to break into the room, not stop it from being broken in. There's only one other place I can go to, and I really don't want to go there. But yeah, doing a uh, Let's Play of Resident Evil 7, just to get everyone hyped for Resident Evil 8, and also kind of refresh us on the storyline about what the hell's going on, too, because I think that'd be really fun, too. And I, I loved Resident Evil 7. It was such a great game. Okay, good. I can't go down there, so I'm alright with that, actually. Now I'm at the part now. This game does pretty well. It just leaves you in an area, and it's like, figure it out. Okay, well, I barricaded the, the door to, I'm guessing, her room. So, that is what I did for now. Oh, here we go. My, uh, my notes. Clean up any broken plates, hide kitchen knife under bed, check emails on phone, nail wooden planks on doors, turn off all lights, go to bed. Clean up any broken plates. So, this is my to-do list. Uh, here's my phone here, so I can at least check this for messages. This why is this not on? Can I turn this on? How can I how how do I turn this on? Yeah, I know that. And ease interact, but I can't interact with it unless it wants me to turn it to the side and then do it. I can't rotate that way. Oh I can. Okay. Oh come on. How do I check my phone for messages if it's dead, if it's not on? Unless it wants me to do that in a certain order, like, does it matter which- Oh, no, it does matter. I want me to clean up the broken plates first. Let's see if there's any broken plates then, I guess. Well, it's a good thing I fucking locked her ass in first. Oh, this was not there earlier, was it? But yeah, I, I loved Resident Evil 7. It was one of my favorite Resident Evil games. I really did enjoy a remake of 2 and 3, even though 3 was kind of like, you know, that wasn't broken earlier. Three was uh, shorter than two, and uh, house cleaner. <laughs> now you're mocking me. Uh, three was not as long as Media's two, but I did like the whole entire Nemesis thing. I like the storyline. I like just I like knowing more about Resident Evil. Seven was fun. I liked Seven too because it was like a new narrative, new character, you know, new challenges, new enemies, stuff like that. And I like Ethan. I like Ethan as a very basic character. He's like your ultimate average man, which I know is silly for a Resident Evil game because there's like characters like Leon uh, doing backflips and Chris is punching fucking boulders and shit, but Ethan is a guy that I can relate to super hard. And I like that about Ethan. Well, I'm glad that we're using Ethan again for uh, Resident Evil 8, so. Okay. That's that. I can't use the uh, laptop to check emails, which is way easier to use than my fucking cell phone. But all my cell phone's just sitting in the living room anyways, but that's fine. Okay, so... I see more breaking plates. Broken breaking plates. I wish you would check it off as I'm doing it. Hide kitchen knife under bed. Got it. I don't like that. I have to hide my kitchen knife under the bed so she doesn't find it. I feel like there's been probably a couple of events when she's had the kitchen knife before. And it's like, yeah, I should probably hide that so she doesn't, like, stab me or stab her. It's probably more so she doesn't stab herself with it, of course. But still. Here we go. Got the kitchen knife. So she can't stab herself with in the middle of the night. Which is, like, really extreme that I have to board. If you have to board your grandmother in in the middle of the night so she doesn't wander off or anything. Yeah, she needs to be in fucking hospice. There's, uh, no other way. And why would you hide underneath your bed? Like, I guess, so, so, uh, she has to wake you up to get it, but it's, like, at the same goddamn time. It's, like, uh, it almost feels like you're hiding life underneath the beds for your own protection, too, at that point. Oh, and then my phone went off. Okay, so I was right. 
It's unfortunate you declined our scholarship program. Thank you for applying. We hope you are unsuccessful in your future academic endeavors. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Yes, stop. Stop. Stop mocking me. That means Nail Wooden Plank's door did that already. All I gotta do is turn off the lights and go to bed. This is a lie because there is not an option to jerk off, which you all know that's one of the things I would do before going to bed too, is jerk off, but... Hey, man, maybe I'm so beat from playing with boxes all day, I can't play with anyone else's boxes. Oh, that's horrible. I don't see, like, a light in here. Even though there's obviously a light on in here, but I don't see a light switch is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I think that room's gonna just stay on forever. Maybe it's on a photo lens or some photo sense or something, so... This is the worst. I hate doing this. Oh, it's probably down to that room, I bet. Yep, that's what it is. Fuck, this is... Big house means a lot of lights, all right? That's bad. Should I hide the spoons, too? Oh, boy. Okay. Turn off the lights. I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. Don't be crazy. I love you, Grandma. Don't be crazy. I'm kind of glad that all the lights are on, but it's probably because she turned them on because she's fucking crazy, but... That's my phone. This is the only guy that I know that doesn't actually take his phone with him when he goes to sleep. Maybe he literally is too tired. And my last light. Hello? How do I turn off this light switch? Maybe I'm missing a light somewhere? I don't want to go back out there. Don't make me go back out there, game. I'm trying to fucking go to bed. Why does it open up just the drawer? Hmm. Maybe I am missing a light switch, but I really don't want to go back out there either. Maybe I'm just not going from the right angle. Sorrow. Nope, I can't turn the light switch back on. That's another fucking red herring. Oh, there he is. I was not, that was not the right angle. Okay. Still, still a red herring. I don't like that. You gotta close your blinds, man. You gotta close your fucking blinds, man. You gotta close your fucking blinds, man. Can you imagine how terrifying that would be to... Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Grandma, I love you with all my heart. Don't do this. Don't make me use a knife. I'm hiding underneath my pillow. I barricaded you in your fucking room too, by the way. Did she get through the fucking window again? Do I need to start barricading you in a window? I need to barricade my fucking door. Not her door. No, no, no. Don't answer that. Oh my god, please. Oh fuck, just close your eyes. No. Oh. oh, she's not taking no for an answer. Oh my god, why am I frozen like this? This is fucking terrifying. <gasps> was that her breaking her own door down? I think that was her breaking her barricades down. Yeah, she's outside of her room. Oh gosh, she's gonna find the kitchen knife. It's a good thing I hit it. <gasps> That's my door! Oh, I'm not looking! I'm not looking! Oh! Did you hear that? Fuck! Oh, I don't want to look. Oh, I don't want to. What time is it? It's still ten o'clock. Why can't I fucking turn on the lights? Are you? Did you come down in here, Grandma? Are you in here? Nope. Why? Can I not turn on the lights?
Now I gotta find my crazy ass grandma and rope her back into her room. Right? Fuck this, dude. I couldn't do this. I love my fucking grandma and I couldn't do this. Are you full of it? Patience, are you out of it? When will your suffering end? When grandma decides that she has had enough and she finds rest, I guess. I don't know, man. What do you want me to fucking say? She's my grandma. But yeah, I think, you know, grandma's got a lot more problems than being schizophrenic. And, uh, sleep deprivation. Fuck, man. Hey, Fuck. Are you full of it? Patience. Are you out of it? James. When will your suffering end? I just read that note, thank you. You wanted her to die, didn't you? That's Not fucked up, sake, but, but for your I can own. understand that. You yearned for her death. Not because her suffering would cease. It was because yours would cease as well. Mm. Mm. That's coding, baby. Oh, another note. Today I found my laptop broken and I left her alone just for a few minutes while I was in the bathroom. I guess she walked into my bedroom and had an episode. I have to drain my savings in order to replace it, James. That's, that's, oh, that's shitty. Oh, bathroom. She's in the fucking bathroom. Or I was in the bathroom. That's, okay, that's my next hint. See, you guys listen to the hints. Okay, maybe that wasn't a very good hint, but I like to think it was. Unless there's another bathroom. And after that door anymore. Uh. I don't tell me this is gonna end with. Oh no, do I grab the knife from the bed? I thought I was gonna grab the knife and take her out of her misery. She had an accident. She got herself on the knife and she proceeded to stab herself 47 times. It could have happened to anyone, honestly. I feel like I don't need to go in this room just yet, yeah. It will kind of give me a hint when I need to go in there. Fuck, man. I haven't played a horror game in a long time, so I am not, not like mentally prepared or ready for any of this. I'm like freaking out right now. I'm talking about playing Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 did scare the shit out of me, too. I had some generally, like, oh, God moments. Do you feel the resentment pulsating through your veins? Do you feel the last breath of patience exiting your body? Do you feel the rage welling up? Overflowing? Displacing empathy, sympathy, and love? Do you hear it? It's calling you. A way out. Follow it. Let it guide you. I think that's my hint. Oh man, this is getting pretty fucking dark too right now. I don't like what's gonna happen next. Two dead in a fatal crash, a fatal accident that occurred last week and is currently being investigated. Reports say that an elderly couple along with their infant grandson were driving. That's the one for the beginning. The driver lost control, the vehicle swerved off. The grandmother and the grandfather both died. The son survived. Frank Young was killed in the accident. It was along with his infant grandson, Kevin Young. Now, that's not a different one. Margaret Young. Margaret Young is... No, no, I, have a, I had a brother. That's right. My brother died. My grandmother survived. Alcohol was... Should, it 
rumored to be involved in it. This is Dear Mother. Sorry I've been answering your calls. I know it wasn't your fault losing Kevin and Dad. You've been taking a lot of toll of us. I think Sarah just needs some time to grieve and accept what's happened. Take care of your son, Neil. Okay. Uh, they never answered any of my letters or calls. I wanted an eternity, eternity to hear the sound of their voices. Waited. And it's, sorry. A brutal crime scene emerged this weekend within a quiet suburban neighborhood. Two victims, Neil Young and Sarah Young, were viciously stabbed by them. They weren't burned. They were stabbed. That's right. They were stabbed to death. The two parents leave an infant son behind. Authorities do not have a leave. As a report, each victim was stabbed over 30, 30 times, resulting in the face of the victims to be heavily disordered and mangled. This brutal crime has shocked the local community. And this one is truth. I, I did something Water unspeakable. I killed them. I murdered them both. I didn't know what to do. I had nothing left to live for. I'm, I'm so sorry. Your, your grandparents were involved in an accident that killed your grandfather and your infant brother. It wasn't your grandmother's fault entirely, but your parents couldn't help but put the blame on her. With no family or friends left, Living a hopeless and bleak existence, your grandmother decided to murder them. With your parents out of the way, she could raise you all by herself. Her desire was selfish and evil. That was all you needed. A way to justify her death. A way to break the burden of taking care of her. Do you remember what you did? Oh, no. I'll walk you through it once more, just in case you've forgotten. So, is he saying that I placed that image in my head that my grandmother killed my parents to give me motivation to kill her? Because that's what it seems like. It doesn't seem like an actual confession confession from her saying that she did that. I did something unspeakable. I killed them. I murdered them both. I didn't know what uh, to do. I had nothing to look for. I'm so sorry. I mean, I do believe she could have did that, but he's making it seem like I planted that memory in my own head to justify me killing her to get away from her existence. If that's true, that's fucked up too. That's not that's not cool, man. That's bad. That's bad news bears. Oh man. We were already guessing that the grandmother killed the parents so she could raise the child. That we kinda saw coming. What we didn't see coming is the kid, me, James, forcing that into his mind to justify killing his own grandmother just because he was so tired of her. Get the knife. Get the new radio, get the phone, place knife on her bed, replace old radio, place the phone on the table outside the door, wait outside her room. The knife is in my bedroom. I can't get the knife. Unless the knife's in the kitchen. Also, I love how the lights are red. Hello? More notes. Get the knife. Okay, this is all. I just noticed the notes are literally everywhere. Okay. This is the, you can't screw this up. He's walking me through, which I love how this is like, this is like a purgatory thing. Like he's reliving because I've, I've lost memory of what happened. He's like reliving on what I did. So get the knife, get the radio, get the knife, get the radio, get the phone, place knife outside of her bed. Place knife on her bed. Replace the old radio, place the phone on the table outside the door, wait outside the room. Why would I place the phone outside? Am I recording her killing herself? That's sick. That's demented as fuck. Uh, maybe he wanted proof, because he probably knows that if she got the knife, she would hurt herself with it. But I feel like she's, he's doing that on purpose. He's purposely leaving the knife here because he knows that she would use the knife on herself. On accident, because she's having an episode. Place the radio, replace the knife... Literally put the one thing I have to hide every single night from her so she won't fucking use it on herself and then leave the phone outside here. fucking motivate her to kill herself? That's even worse!
Oh, that's not even the good way to heal yourself. You could've just gave her fucking pain pills. She, she would've OD'd on that. Why use a fucking knife? This is sick. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! I, I can't get in there. Yeah, if that's the way you actually fucking killed a grandmother, I'm not surprised she's fucking haunting your ass in purgatory. You deserve it ten times over. Yeah, even if she was making your life a living hell, even if she did kill your parents, which is not exactly true yet, because we don't know that to be true yet, she didn't fucking deserve to die that James, gruesomely. You murdered her. You knew about her delusions. She always talked about the man. Oh, uh, we hooked up so the Bluetooth on the to radio. You replaced oh, the old God. radio and then played an audio file telling her to stab herself repeatedly with a knife. Fucking metal. You knew she was delusional and had episodes of schizophrenia. She followed your instructions and eventually bled to death due to her self-inflicted uh, injuries. Uh... Since all the evidence pointed to a suicide, you weren't charged with anything. You finally got what you wanted. You were finally free. You might be wondering how exactly you ended up dead. Well, for the first few months, you lived your life carefree. Karma always comes back, man. You actually enjoyed life to some extent, not being tied down by an ill relative. But eventually, that all came crashing down. It started off with brief, horrific, Gruesome nightmares. Visions of her stabbing herself endlessly. Blood gushing out of her wounds. Flooding your mind with blood-red guilt. Slowly, these nightmares leaked into your daily life. You'd see her out of the corner of your eye. Whether you were driving, walking down the street, or at work. Even though you killed her, she never really left. She lived in your mind and haunted you every day until you eventually couldn't fall asleep. Every time you closed your eyes, even for the briefest of moments, she'd manifest in your subconscious. Eventually you went to the hospital and you were prescribed sleep medicine, but that only suppressed the issue. Slowly your body adjusted to the medicine and you needed to increase uh, I think I see where this for the is medicine going. to be effective. 
This process kept repeating until you were taking multiple times the recommended amount. You were addicted until one night you overdosed on sleep medication. Doubles cocktail. Right now, in this moment, your physical body is currently in a hospital bed, hovering between the thin line of life and death. I'm in God's basement. You're still probably wondering why you're here in God's basement. I'll finally tell you who I am and what this place really is. God's basement is a realm for those who have committed great sin, but are still redeemable. The individuals that arrive in God's basement relive their own versions of hell, allowing them to reflect on their life and watch their slow descent into evil. Their resentment, hate, bitterness, and jealousy accumulate until those emotions manifest themselves through atrocious acts, yours being murder. You were backed into a corner, watching your life slowly pass you by. All those opportunities you sacrificed. All that potential wasted. You became bitter and resentful. Many could sympathize with you. Many might have even done the same. You were hopeless, and it felt like you were inside a living hell. I am called the Operator. I am an entity that manifests in God's basement. I manifest myself in different ways depending on the person. My job is to guide the person inside God's basement and allow them to relive their life from a different perspective. In your case, I manifested with many characteristics resembling the man in the radio. Hopefully this explanation cleared everything up. Yeah, feels like it did. You're still probably wondering what happens now that you have all your memories. I mentioned earlier that God's basement are for those who are still redeemable. Even though you committed an atrocious sin, you were trapped in a hopeless existence. Also, the person you killed wasn't really your grandmother. She was a shell of her former self. Debatable, your but alright. Your grandmother right. died long ago. Part of you wanted to see her suffering cease. Your crime was both cruel and merciful. I don't know about that merciful part. You could have killed her in a lot less uh, crucial a way, but yeah, all right. Life. Pretty soon you're going to wake up in a hospital bed out of your drug induced coma. Learn to live with what you did. The feelings of guilt, paranoia, and pain will never completely go away. James. Make the most out of life, and be grateful for this second chance. One last thing. Good luck. Man, that's fucking deep. I really like that, actually. I like that whole entire, like, fucking, uh, the operator aspect, putting you through purgatory, and just being like, this is like, it's like the fucking Christmas story about Christmas, future, past, and present with, uh, 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 Scrooge or uh, Humbug, I can't remember that fucking guy's name, but it's the same thing, but it's like, hey, this is what you did, seeing it from a different perspective, you fucked up, and you are on thin ice, and you need to go carefully through life to basically atone for your sins. He didn't say go back to church and do a couple of hammers, he's like, no, you need, to, you need to change your direction, you have a chance to do real good, You've done some bad things wrong. You need to make peace with it. The pain's never going to go away. But now you can regain control of your life fully. I really like that. It's it's deep. It's pretty fucking deep. I like it. I honestly thought our main character was dead dead. So the fact that he was like redeemable because of like now it's like now every day is a gift. Now every day you have to basically pay it forward to the max. So that's the only way you're going to be able to be able to live with yourself is by fucking doing the best you can. Push so much good back into the world. For all the evil that you've taken from it or pushed into it. That's that's sobering. I like that ending. It's very uh relaxing. It's super fucking morbid because yeah, that's a really brutal way to fucking kill your grandmother, man. Yeah, that's a very fun game. Thank you. Thank you for making this. Thank you for guys for uh pushing me to complete this and play the rest of it. I was gonna have it be like a one shot, but it seemed really interesting and you guys seem to really enjoy it, so I decided, hey, what the hell? Why not, why not finish it, pick it back up and uh put a nice little bow on it, so that is God's Basement. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you guys enjoyed it. Is she always smiling? I can't tell. 
if you guys uh, want me to do a Resident Evil 7 playthrough, I might not start it yet. I might start it after I wrap up some of the other projects I got going on. I think I want to do Witch Hunt again. I think I said I wanted to play that some more. Don't know if you guys cared too much about that. Uh, hello, I'm the developer of God's Basement. You've reached the end, and I want to say thank you for playing through the whole game. Thank you for making the game. I'm still pretty new to creating video games, so I hope the experience was bearable. Hopefully, you enjoyed the experience. Maybe someday you'll play another one of my games, and I'll be able to release another one. Thanks again, Eberus. Thank you, Eberus, for making God's Basement. It was a very, very uh, deep and sobering journey. It was it was definitely eye-opening, and it was scary, too. It scared the shit out of me. Like, I love horror games that are like more of a thriller, not like a jump scare, boo in your face. I like atmosphere atmosphere is a really important aspect to a good horror game anyways guys i'm chris this is god's basement i think i bought it on steam for like two dollars i can't remember it was a good deal nice little game got some good videos out of it hope you guys enjoy if you want to play it for yourself check it out on steam i'll put uh the link to the, the game itself in the description below and we'll see you guys next time stay tuned stay beautiful until then guys good night